Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having us. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so we use a, it is our understanding you want to see our software that we use uh, to manage projects. Yeah. We use a software called Owner Insight. Have you ever heard of that? No. Okay. So uh, Owner Insight uh, was developed about 11 years ago. Uh, we've been using it for about nine years. Uh, we're what's called a legacy partner. Big deal. What that means is we're kind of the only owner's rep in Colorado that uses it and we can also help them improve it. So we constantly go to them and say, you know, we need this report or we need this to look like this and they will try and do that. It's not, they don't do that quite as fast as they used to eight years ago, but um, they are actually improving it as we go. So uh, Owner Insight is not just a budget tracking software, it's also um, what we would consider risk management software. So it really is, and Brooke will show you, it, it's for the whole project. It's just not for the budget or for cost tracking. Okay. It's for RFIs and contracts and change orders and um, you know, meeting minutes, um, all your document control for a project, if you so choose to do that. So we're not going to sell you on a tape, we're just wanting to let you know we're only using a portion of what we okay. use. Okay. It's just not for what it is. So just to reiterate, um, this is our team. Brooke and I will be your main points of contact. Dan Tran is a project manager that we have. This is from our uh, proposal. Just want to let you know, Dan uh, would be here, but he's on vacation. Um, he would be doing more of the front end of a pay app review. So once we would get a pay app in, he would be on site making sure that percent complete is done. Make sure if you're billing for windows, windows are in. Make sure if you're billing for this, that is in. Um, then it gets turned over to Brooke. Brooke makes sure that the contract um, is in place. She understands how they should be billing and goes from there. We'll get into a little bit deeper from there. But I just want to let you know that we do have a lot of staff members. Uh, a lot of the people down below, uh, we have, I believe, six school projects in Colorado Springs Pueblo area right now that are all program projects, big projects, and so we do this all the time. This is our team. Uh, what I did is I put this on the back for you guys so you know who you're talking to. This is kind of the topics of discussion that I understood we might be talking about based on your RFP. If you want to make sure we cover something, please let me know and I'm happy to go over anything. But budgeting, job costing, change management, accounting, financial reporting, and consultation were kind of in your RFP. Was there anything in particular you guys really wanted to see? if we can do. And I think a lot of it is just like um, um, being able to, within the tool, have your invoices attached to all the you know, expenditures today that you can click yep. on as well. Um, Sub-projects within a project. Okay. Able to, you know, make yep. it's peak view, elementary, but then architect, yep. whatever we might. And then okay. um, account codes, be able to maybe put in our own account codes just to we kind of help us balance. Yep. And then, um, how that tool works like towards the end of the project what we're used to was then you know we have a couple million left whatever it might be and maybe we're doing roof repairs or somewhere we're doing smaller things that we would really not need we kind of just take it on ourselves at that point is that what would happen to this tool is it proprietary would we be able to still access and use it or is it when it's done it's done and you know because you may want to go i've had people ask me now through um court request which is called open records access that i want to see everything you spent in 16. you know and so I was sure. able to give them our old tool and say, here's everything we spent, so. Okay, this, this software is strictly for owners. Okay. You're gonna see a lot of project software you might have seen in the past, like Procore or things like that that the contractors used. We've tried to deal with those guys before, but they just can't do the overall project view, if you will. They do the contractor side and that's kind of it. Yeah. Um, we work with contractors all the time that, that use our system alongside their system. Um, so just to let you know, that, that is totally different because this is owner, and the reason I say that is we've actually had owners in the past before, I think Mapleton School District was one I worked with, that took this after we were done and they use it internally for all their projects yeah, that cool. they do internally. So we can continue to use you it? You can continue it. using it, get your own license, gotcha. things like that, okay. if you wanted to do that. Okay. But at the end of the project, we do um, archive all the information on here, you get a flash drive, That's you can look at it like it's live. Okay. Okay. Um, the one thing that is very important on our system is it's live all the time. I've had a client that 
she liked to look at the at the information at ten o'clock at night when she's you know it's quiet, got a glass of wine or whatever. Yeah. All that information in there is up to date, so it's not like you're waiting for information from us. Yeah. So um, that's all online. So yeah, yeah it's all. There's online. no sync that has to happen every night. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah, we can have as many users as you want in it, or many users you don't want in it. We can set the limits on what people see and what they don't see. Contractors, we normally don't let them see like the overall budget or the architect budget, you know, and vice versa. Like that. <laughs> but it's all up to you on how you how you want to set it up. So, uh, first thing you want to talk about was budgeting. I, I know you have a budget for project. Somebody help you do that. No, not yet. What we're going to do is we're going to help you confirm it. I'm wanting to have a drink. And I can I can do whatever you need to do, but um, we're going to help you confirm it. We just threw in, Brooke um, put in two projects, the Peak View Elementary and the Raydance Elementary project, just from your website, $40 million a piece, yeah, and just kind of show you how the system works. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a, um, a look at the budget that you would see, and we'll show you live in just a second here. But what she did is she just threw it in there as two line items with, with cost. Normally it's something on the right with 50 line items with all the costs associated with you're going to have things like design. You're going to have things like remediation of prairie dogs might be a line item. Mm -hmm. You're going to have uh, testing. You're going to have contingency, all that stuff in there. Um, so why don't you go ahead and go live okay. and then just talk about. So we set one up for Peak View and also Rain Dance. Okay. So they both have their own project here. This is the accounting dashboard. Okay. But you'll see there's design, there's communications, all your meeting minutes. You're, there's construction documents, there's all documents in general, um, there's a directory for everyone who's been involved in the project. So they really can do a lot more than accounting, but I'm just gonna focus yeah. on accounting. Okay. So on this dashboard, this blue section aligns with the budget, the green aligns with the committed costs, so contracts, change orders, change proposals, purchase orders, and the orange aligns with the incurred costs in the ledger. And then the summary down here. Well, this is kind of your dashboard view that you want to be able to look at at any time. Yeah. And then you can drill down and you can just keep drilling down to wherever you want to see. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the budget that Dan um, brought up. Real basic, with just, I mean, based on your website, the yeah. general contractor amount, the soft cost amount, but again, we would dig down much further. Yeah. Um, and we went ahead and entered. Adolfson and Peterson's contract in here, <laughs> um, just to be able to show you guys yeah. an example. Yeah. Um, but you'll so you'll see the committed costs here with contracts, POs, change orders, um, and then this, the sum of those columns, and then also with the actual costs. Um, so we we did go ahead and do a change proposal as well to just give you something yeah. to look at here. So here's an example of the contracts page. You can go ahead and open. And I didn't say it to start off with, but rather than us just presenting the information, we want to make this a conversation. So if yeah, there's any questions you have, please ask. Yeah, chime in at any time. Um, so I've got in and entered a little bit of contact or um, company information, the contract amount, and went ahead and uh, attached. A fake contract. A fake well, contract. One from Colorado Springs. Yeah. yeah. But just so you can see it. Yeah. So here's the contract. You can go ahead and print it. You can download it. Um, we would attach the contract, the W-9, the insurance forms, everything on this one screen. You can add as many as you want. Um, a copy, for example, if you guys issue a purchase order, um, that way it would all be attached in here and you can go in and download yeah. um, if you seem to have misplaced it. You can also access all of their um, pay apps and contracts and everything from this screen as well. So that's contracts. And then change proposals. Went ahead and created one for a dollar. <laughs> what this system does do is it has kind of a two step process for change orders. It has change proposals, and then it has change orders. So change proposals are all the detailed change orders for the project that can be rolled up into one change order per month. You don't want 500 change orders, you want one change order a month with several change mm -hmm. proposals in it. So that's why that uh, distinction there. And similar to contracts, you just attach the PDF, 
um, and you can download it, print it. Um, you can list as many approvers as you would like. I went ahead and attached myself, but you can also add commenters. So if the accounts payable person one should be added to each one of these just so they know that there's an approved change, we can do that as well. So the change proposals roll into a change order. Very similar looking screen here, but they would all be listed here if you had multiple change proposals so you could see the cost. And again, the PDF attached it again. So um, there's there's no hidden, like what, where did that number come from? Or it's all very transparent. Um, purchase orders, I didn't add any, but you know, if you're gonna order furniture, you put the, the purchase order in here again with the W9. Yeah. Any other documents? So an example of a payoff here. Um, sorry, incurred costs. There's payoffs. There's invoices which link to the purchase order, and there's expenses that would be like a credit card purchase, Amazon, or um, something that's not linked to a PO or a contract. Yeah. Um, you can sort this list by any of these columns. So if you just wanted to see paid, submitted for approval. Um, in progress, it, the status would be listed over here and you can sort by that. I typically sort by contract um, because you, you'll get many in here at some point in time. Um, I don't know, open one. What we'll do is we'll show you one of our other projects down the springs, Harrison School District. I think they have 15 projects listed or something like that. Yeah. They're all tied together and it's all full. And so we'll just show you what it's yeah, going to look like yeah, yeah. to a point, but we wanted to kind of keep it basic and kind of just yeah. run it by you. Yeah. So here's a, again, the very bottom is the PDF. You can, you can either just view it, you can download it, you can print it. Um, you can list as many approvers as necessary. Um, when, it, when this does get submitted, it sends you an email, so you know it's out there. Here's a copy of the email. It looks just like the other page. Um, in this yellow section, you can just click here to view and it'll take you directly to the payout. So it is very simple to just get in there and click approve or reject um, or make a comment if you wanted to. You can even reply to that email and your email above the line will show up in the comments mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm. So if you want to track something, yeah. if you had a comment on, you know, I didn't, I didn't think this was correct or something like that. You want to track that information, you can actually email it in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that is incurred costs. You have something, um, and maybe you're going to it now. You saw the ledger, like if someone said, I want to see everything, every invoice you spent on PQ that you tied to the PQ project. Is there something, because I literally have had that and that asked that would be the incurred. think we're not doing what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, that would be the incurred cost like she was talking okay. about. So right now we just have one right. in there, but, you'd see but if you've got two years of invoices, invoices, you can sort it by PQ or you can um, you get every invoice, paid every invoice that for, okay. for PQ. Okay. But, but what we do is we set these up per project. So you would actually see it per PQ right. for the project, right. but it's also tied to, you know, for all your projects in what's called a program. Gotcha. So you can do the program view also. The program's the bond program. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Projects, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the ledger would also show you, you know, the, the, what's happened under the incurred cost tab. Um, it's not quite as detailed yeah. as just looking at the incurred cost tab. Um, but the ledger tracks any changes too yeah. for, for peak view. So, I mean, if you wanted to go and find out why, when you moved money from contingency into construction and why you did it, the ledger is where you would find that. Yeah. And you said you could, you could use our account numbers or budget codes. Yeah. We can set that up. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. when we set up the budget, we can we can call these anything. I mean, I did this. So we can call it anything I want. So I could easily start each one with your account code. Yeah. Um, that, that's Those codes are this long. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so under furniture, for instance, we could have non-capitalized costs and capitalized costs if we bought one item over five thousand you can split it we in can ways. split we can split it in oh, yeah. out. Yes. yes yeah yep. and then yep. that would help me tie my fixed assets register yep. to yep yep um, yeah, absolutely you can go in and sort those and print it however you like for mm -hmm. that type of thing sure okay i mean i've had somebody call me from severance high school and say can you tell me how much we paid for our risers? 
And I'm like, well, first of all, who did we pay for our practice? <laughs> you know, <laughs> cool. I'm pretty sure I know where if we had bought it, you know, it's Wagner or whatever. Right. But we did it on one big order through a furniture contractor, you know, and so it's hard to go back and find that. Well, that's a good example because, like we said, after this is over, we archive the project. You get a flash drive and you pull it up, and it looks just it's like this. Sure. So you can sort everything, you can print PDFs, whatever you need to do, and drill find down. Who that you export, export to Excel. Absolutely. And then you can do a search if we need to maybe write yep. or something like or that. Or you can search in here. Okay. This is yep. here's the export to Excel button right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. You just can't make changes once it's archived. That's yeah. the right. only limitation. Right. Which, well, it, which is which good. You wouldn't want, you to. want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So here's a view of the program. So there were two projects. Um, again, with having the same budget, you know, based on what was online, yeah. it only looks so pretty. <laughs> but here's Harrison School District, which is a large program. Yeah. These are all different schools. So you'll still see that same blue section for the budget, green section mm -hmm. for the committee costs orange section for the actuals yeah. for each one of the school projects. Yeah. And then here's a very pretty budget yeah. breakdown yeah. with the pie chart. Yeah. Um, one thing that they did that I would recommend that you do if you scroll back up, again, their last project there, the district admin buildings, mm -hmm. that's kind of what the- What was the last thing to work on? Well, it was actually kind of the one that's- over money. You never testify on that one. Right. You don't like it. This one they kind of just lumped in, like a rooftop replacement there or yeah. security there, yeah. into one project versus having all those. That's kind of what we did towards the end, just like here's what we had left, and, yep. and just let's, what is our biggest need? You know, like you said, is it roof repairs and HVAC replacement? Sure. Whatever. Yep. Yeah. But what they also started with was what they call the bond level project, which yeah. we like to do on the programs. So this is kind of the overall thing. This is where they were keeping their contingency, mm -hmm. and so this is this is the kind of the bank account that you take all your interest you're making off all your bond money mm -hmm. and put that in there if you wanted to put that into contingency mm -hmm. and then be able to spread that. So mm -hmm. on the program view, you can actually move money around from project to project, but the best way to trace it is to go from project to bond, then bond to another project yeah. versus within project. Yeah, I agree. Kind of like mm -hmm. right. That's kind of how we did contingency. We moved, always moved it out so we could track it. Like, right. Where did we put that extra money? And if there's anything like on the bond level project, like your salary or something for that, we could track that in that bond level project yeah. or somebody's uh, cost. Yeah. Um, and then we had another one of those schools pulled up that came out of this program. Did you want to touch on any of that? Yeah, go ahead and go through it. Just kind of show. So you're going to be able to see, like, even if you just go to incurred costs. Um, so this is the budget for it. Again, okay. we've got a lot of line items, not just two. If you go to incur, so these <coughs> are all the projects for this, um, or these, excuse me, all the contracts the and payouts uh, pay for That's this cool. project. Yeah. Okay, then you can sort it by either Bryan Construction or Farnsworth. Um, you can sort it by month, year, however you want to see that. Mm -hmm. And you said you could have a roll-up structure, so if you have... Like within a school, you have the school budget's forty million, but then under the school you have architect and all these sub You can kind of do a roll up thing. Like yep. There's all of the different the projects budget. within the main school projects. Yep. So here's all of the detail. And, and then, then if you just click the roll up button, show all accounts. Okay. And you can roll it up. You can look at just one at a time if you wanted to. This is great information for your bond oversight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Showing it this way. We have our first yeah. meeting Thursday. Oh, okay. We didn't have to really spend much. Okay. Time. So you, you can show as much or a little detail. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, show all again. So we have to our presentation here. Dan, did you want to touch on the, um, the invoice? Yeah, so um, fund requesting, you know, it's all in how you want to do it. Um, a lot of projects, um, as a pay app or something comes in or an invoice comes in, it just runs through the system and you pay it when, it, when it's approved. If you wanted to bundle it like once a month and bundle it into an actual fund request, we can do that. 
that's typically how you do it, but this this shows what we're doing down in, in Colorado Springs for like a best program. Okay. So it's not the same kind of thing. You wouldn't necessarily be using that form. We can use any form you want. But as a payout comes in, the process that we use is when it comes in, it comes to us. Okay, okay. Dan Tram or myself would, would take a look at it. Um, it looks pretty good. Let's go out and look at the site and make sure that they're billing for things they should be billing for. Then it shows up to Brooke, and Brooke takes a look at it and compares it to their contract, makes sure that um, it all matches their contract, makes sure they're billing for what they're supposed to be billing for, no tax. That's one thing that drives us crazy. They have tax on things that they should not tax mm -hmm. on. Yeah. She's really good at getting the correct backup according to the contract. Okay. Um, you know, you buy a two by four, you gotta have a receipt for a two by four. <laughs> Pretty simple. Yeah. So once that is approvable, what she'll do is she'll put it in the system like she showed. The payout goes in there, and then whoever you want to be the approver, we can list the approvers. Um, sometimes if you have a lot of invoices, that gets kind of crazy to have that many approvers. Maybe you just want to approve the package. Right. We can set up however you want. Maybe it's just me doing the approval to move it on, and then you get the, the uh, email that says it's been approved. Then you can go in and make a comment. Um, when that has been paid, you can actually go in and if you want to record check numbers. Yeah. On each one, you can record the check numbers, make a note saying it's paid, this date, whatever that is. We talked a little bit about change management, I think, already. Uh, anything else on that you want to want to no, touch on? When, when, when I want to start working with Mike because he's um, we know work together on this and what his process would be, you know, in the change management versus the owner's rep, and we got to kind of work through that. But sure. that's what the next steps would be. Um, we just make a selection, okay, what does it look like to work together, and who's doing what? Yep, yeah. yep, that'd be good. I mean, we're, as the owner, we're used to handling the whole process, yeah, exactly. but just this as is, the financial side, yeah. we can do whatever we need Yeah, to do. And, that, and, and that's what I'm used to as well, the whole, and so as I told Mike, I need to just figure, figure out our process, and yep. it's not the whole thing yep. now, but so where, where am I involved, where is he involved? <laughs> yep, exactly. So we can figure that out, no problem. Um, we kind of already did the GMP or the change yep. proposal. Yep. Um, this is one of the financial summaries that, that we can provide for you for um, the, so this one is for the, the program, right? Yep. yep. And what it's, it's showing, this was actually for a board report. Um, Matt, one of our guys was telling me about it, that they specifically asked for a bond, a program report that showed what's in progress, what are contingencies left over, and um, two other things that are on there. But basically it shows all the projects and then a nice little chart saying this is how much contingency you have and this is what's in progress. So we can set that up however you want to see that. So you're also, you also talked about consultations um, in the RFP. Um, so we do projections and cash flow and stuff on every project. It's really just kind of how you want to see it. Um, what we typically do on a program is you end up with kind of an overall summary on the left that shows the whole bond program, okay? The one in yellow, I have to highlight just to make sure I reminded me to tell you that mm -hmm. keep track of your interest because we're gonna, you may want to use it for this, you may want to use it for something else, but um, you're, gonna, you're gonna have that interest. Then we can unroll it and do by year for all the projects, and then more of a detail is by month for each project. So you're gonna know in May that you need to pull $4 million out of your bond bank account to be able to pay for yeah. pay per views. Yeah, okay. So I saw a line that's actually um, on that previous page for the uh, charter bond budget to charter school and we will have a portion okay. that has to go to our charter and I, I mean it's a set amount but I, I think that um, we were talking about having them give us request, you know, we're not just gonna give them the whole sure. sum up front. Um, well, yeah. So so they would have to be a separate, you know, project in there, I guess. And I mean, not that we're necessarily overseeing. Yeah, okay. But I guess that would, that that's something I hadn't thought of in all of this too, is just how we manage it's like that. It's a separate, project, it's a separate like, Hey, Rick, you know. We can help you with that and give you some ideas. We do it all the time with the charters. You know, it's kind of their yeah. red-headed stepchild kind of thing. Yeah. You're kind of managing you that. You have to do it. Yeah, yeah you decide. You're responsible, but right. not really. <laughs> we can track it however you like to see yeah, it. Yeah, my daughter's in 
told him, I said, you would, you, you would pay the vendors, but you would have to ask us, so our, our uh, request would be to pay them with all their backup to say, here's how right. much draw you need for the money, we pay yeah. them, and then you pay the vendors. That's kind of what I'm envisioning, is having them complete something to show what they've done, and it's in scope of what they said they were going to yep, do. Exactly. Yep. And we never invited a charter or had a charter participate in a bond, so this is new to us as well. Okay. Yeah, it's the first okay. time. Yeah. All right. Um, that doesn't really apply to you, it just... It does not. It's part of the process, part of our overall bond though. program, yep. is the yeah, allocation sure. of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just know we can track that any way you yeah. need to. Yeah. It, it's pretty simple, yeah. and it's a good system. Um, we kind of, in closing, I was going to talk about our whole system, but we kind of already went through it, where it's not just, you know, I mean, we're looking at the first half for uh, accounting. Mm -hmm. we, we could do more if you want. Yeah. Um, and if or we're, you can, if yeah. you have a project manager that just wants to dump the information in here yeah. too, I mean, like it's it would be yours to use, yeah, as needed, the full extent if you wanted to. I mean, meeting minutes, construction documents. Sorry, Diana, I kind of interrupted. No, I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> What's nice about it is, at the end of the day, you have all that information for each project. Yeah. And you know, ten years from now, you can even look up the paint code for this roof yeah. because it's in the system. Yeah. Including a directory. Yeah. Yeah, we got you in the directory already, so we're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Anything we've missed? No, I think all the things I had, you were asked subprojects and um, how the roll ups work and bond oversight. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. I have another project I'm working on. Um, it's a dam rehabilitation project, and I know nothing about dams and how they work. <laughs> and so on that project, we are strictly managing the funds. It's a FEMA grant. It's a Colorado Water Grant. But so there's a lot of um, accounting aspect to it, but I rely heavily on the engineer to review the payoffs, the contractor payoffs, to make sure that they're billing what is actually being done. Because right. the project's in Breckenridge, so I'm yeah. not clearly yeah. not there to yeah. see it either. Um, and rely on that communication and that teamwork, and they provide photos, so there is, you know, documentation in, in real time of, you know, what's yeah. being done, but yeah. it's, it's the team effort too. Well, that's a good point, because you've seen payoffs before, mm -hmm. and you know that there's a spot for the architect to certify it. Right. Right. We still make them certify it. Right. We would still do that. So they're kind of had the skin in the game too on confirming that that still looks right to them as well. If we need to get an engineer, like you said, involved for looking at mechanical, we can definitely do that as well. Okay. But I mean, we like to stay involved as much as we can just so we know what's going on. Yeah. So there's no surprises, yeah. nothing gets by us. Right. So. Okay. Good. It's a great question though. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I know. I've been thinking about it ever since it came out. Like, I know. How am I going to do this? I think it's, it's and everybody we talk to is very similar, like, well, we've not just, usually the whole, more of it than just yeah. the budgeting. So that, in my mind, too, I'm trying to wrap it in of, you know, how we use each other, how we help yeah. each other out. But, yeah. On your previous bond programs, could I ask, did you have a, 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 a computer software that you yeah. used? We, it was more, it was just really an Excel file. It was pretty detailed, but, um, you know, over time, you know, you need something more online and, and it's not real time, right? And I might have got an invoice and forgot to tell him and he didn't put it sure. in, but I put it in the ledger so I'm out of balance. And so reconciliation, which I would do anyway because we're control freaks. And, <laughs> <laughs> we have to tie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we would put, um, but there, it's, it's outgrown that. Okay. I mean, it, it was, and then like when I got that, um, um, request for someone thinking, you know, I want every invoice you paid for the bonds in 16 months. You know, our drawer is this big. So, I, and that would cost a lot of money because they have to pay for copies and right. all that. So, or scanning and all that. So, we just said, well, I, you can either pay for this or I can send you, you know, every, you know, we track every invoice in Excel right. and we pay for each project. And they never even, put, I think they just thought we didn't have any clue what we spent, apparently, right. <laughs> on our bond. <laughs> and just to prove that, well, we do have. Invoice we've spent, and so never got a question after I provided that Excel. I just kind of copied yep. Excel file into a document and said, Here's every invoice we spent. So, um, but no, we definitely need this is bigger. I mean, every project's been big to me, but this is really big, double, really big. Yeah, Not this many schools yeah. at the same time. We built two, but different times, not two elementary yep. in the middle, and yeah. um, and just like, like just the, the funding. I was saying we sold our bonds on February 7th. And, as of yesterday, so um, over a month and a half, we have like a million and a half of interest. Because the rates are so high, yeah. so who would have thought that? So it's like, oh. I know, so right? <laughs> I might have retired on that in one month if I had that money. <laughs> well, but yeah, so. I know 11 years ago when I first became an owner travel with Paul Wimber, we were doing spreadsheets. And yeah. he is a spreadsheet freak. As yeah. a matter of fact, I hate his spreadsheets. But the problem is, is if there's one little mistake, one we little do, thing, I have to, I have to search for the so why, so why are we off? Oh, I found an invoice he entered. Like, yep. uh, yeah, it was. And yeah, we so, still use yeah. a spreadsheet well, for a lot to back up and everything. Yeah. But yeah. with this information, it, it is just so simple. Yeah. And, and that's one of the reasons why we went with these guys, is because it's real intuitive. It's simple to go and look at. Yeah. And you can't really mess anything up in there unless you really try. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so. Coming up. Anything else? Are you yeah. sure? Remember, you didn't ask one question. No, it's really for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very intrigued by the RFI tracking. That was interesting. Yeah. Do you yeah. see a True. project with some in there? True. Yeah. Um, this one isn't mine, so I don't know for sure. Do we even do so, field reports? I'm going to switch projects to the dam that I was telling you about. So again, that's strictly just um, project, um, like financial management. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's similar to this project. And um, I've entered all these RFIs. These weren't in real time. So um, RFI name and title, I initiated it and I approved it. But you know, the date it was entered, the response date, like you can um, set it so that it'll remind the architect or somebody else to, you know, 
answer the RFI. Mm -hmm. These were all already answered before I got it. So you can open it up, there's a description, there's the response, and... Does this solic solicit the RFIs, or is it just a place to track it? It will email you. So if I entered it and I assigned it to memory to respond, it will send you an email saying um, you have one week or two weeks or whatever, and it'll look just like this screen. The thing is, this is kind of a backwards way of doing it, and it's really more of just like a, a file system, yeah. the way they're yeah. doing it. Yeah. The way the system really works better is to do it intuitively. So the contractor would typically put an RFI in, and he would assign it to the architect. The architect gets a notification, they comment, they close it out. So it's all in it's the, all system the system versus mm -hmm. us just dumping the information. So that's why the, you know, they have access to it. Some of the right. Data. Okay, yeah. so right. more for the communication or... The only things we don't let the contractors put in are things like payoffs and change orders. Yeah. We any, just don't want accounting. them... Any, any accounting. Any We just don't want them in the budget yeah. to do that. But for RFIs, for ASS, for any design, stuff like that, all of that needs to be coordinated through through the team members on the project. Yeah. Um, and it, it works really well to go to another project like Link okay. or something where the contractor actually is putting in the RFIs. And you can track who's looking at it, who's responding, uh, who's commenting to it. Um, so these were all put in. How is, that, construction. how is that information tracked? Pardon me? Like how do you know that someone has, has uh, responded? Does it go so it right to it? Here's the status. So like this one has only been submitted to the architect. Mm -hmm. He didn't assign a date. To, um, he didn't assign a date to respond by. So it's sitting out there as submitted until the architect responds. When the architect does respond, um, it turns green, but it also will send an email. So anytime the architect is in there, whether they just upload a PDF it'll shoot out an email to anyone who is assigned on the distribution list mm -hmm. that we showed you earlier. So go into one of the RFIs and just see how, I mean, the information that they ask the questions. So I was gonna say, is it, because I don't work in the construction world, this is if the contractor needs clarification from an architect yep. on something, yep. they can use, versus having to pick up the phone and call, or maybe they can use this process, say, I need a clarification yep. on this measurement or whatever it might be. And, yep. Yep. and a lot of times if it's urgent, I say pick up the phone yeah, and call. <laughs> with yeah. an RFI, so it's documented. documented. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That makes sense. So we just we just have them put the information in saying, this is the issue, okay. this is the request, a suggestion, and the answer from the architect is... So the architect document. responds. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, when they, when they upload the drawings that are, you know, mm -hmm. that big, it mm -hmm. shrinks the whole page. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so Carmen responded with her, yeah, cool. with the direction. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So that's way better than tracking stuff by email. Yeah, and, and, and everything. It's so yeah. like a ticketing system. Yeah, exactly. And, and this way, you, the client gets to keep a copy of it. Yeah. As opposed to Procore, when they close out a project, that information is gone. Yeah. There is no archive to get to the client. There is, it's not yeah. kept. So I mean, this, this year, you know maintenance or facilities guys can go back through and look up information. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's a submittal or an RFI. Okay. All right. Anything else that we missed? Okay, no, I think it was very thorough. Thank you. We need to okay. move forward pretty quickly, so we'll let you know within the next day or so. Yeah, we need to, we're trying to get it in more um, Monday's meeting, Monday's board meeting approval to move okay. forward. So we'll have to get it to the board back by in a day tomorrow. Tomorrow noon. Tomorrow and then tomorrow. it's an announced at the board, or it'll be uh, an action yes. letter, uh, action item to approve uh, okay. the owner's rep. Will you notify we'll the owner's rep prior to the board, or oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll the board make a decision. We'll probably make a decision tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, and so we can get it to the board back. And it'll say in here. It'll, it'll be in there. We'll recommend it. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you have any other questions before then, please let us know. Thanks for your time.